Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about us and our services, please visit our website at www.wsk9co.com. Today we're going to talk about knowing um, when to quit with training, and I think it's um, I think it's something that happens a lot where we get going and it's good, and we keep pushing to the next, and and because I think we have a an idea in our head of how far we need to get to. And uh, I was working with a pointer puppy this weekend, and um, wow, well, leave it was challenging for this um, for this puppy, and and so instead of trying to get each step perfect, I just moved through it, and she actually finally got to a point where we could we could do it. But I also, as soon as she, I said leave it, and she looked at me at the end, it was that was it, that was done. I wasn't going to keep dropping food to show the owners this, this is where we go, and this is the next step. I just stopped at that point and said we'll build on it you know, next week. And so I think it's important to know when to quit in every situation, meaning, you know, we're not going to wait and see if you're going to do it again, um, is an, is another knowing when to quit, um, with bad behavior and, um, and also in training when you're being successful. Um, Michelle, what are, what are some of the situations that you had this weekend that would have been, um, maybe some good times to quit or um, in good and bad? Um, so I've been working with a German Shepherd puppy, mm-hmm. um, and he's so smart. He's so crazy smart. It's actually really fun to work with him. Um, but after uh, about 10 minutes, I could tell he was getting bored with it, Yeah, and that was a good time to quit because I wanted him still to be excited about what we were doing because we were just doing repetitions of the same thing. Right. Um, and it's a bigger thing. I feel like Hill is like actually a pretty big thing for dogs to completely accomplish, and I yep. still want him to be excited about it. So after about 10 minutes, we, we stopped. Nice. <laughs> yeah. He got to eat his dinner, the rest of his dinner downstairs. Nice. Um, I'm trying to think of a, a bad time. Let's see. I, there have been a few bad times. I, uh, another dog that I've been working with um, – He's really struggling with his, just his downs and stays, like mm-hmm. really struggling with it. Um, and he gets really testy about it. And it's really hard to know when to quit on that one because it, I don't know, like, I, I mean, I know, but like, <laughs> but it's really hard for the owner to realize if he's testing her or if he's just not getting it. Right. right. Um, and so how did you help her? Um, th- so we talked that? about it. We talked about if she ever starts to feel frustrated, she needs to stop. Mm-hmm. She needs to not take it out on him. Yep. Um, and even if that's not like, in an aggressive taking it out on him, just taking it out on him because she's getting flustered. So her body language is changing. So right. he, then he's getting frustrated and has no idea. Yeah. Um, so we talked about walking away. If, if she feels like he's testing her, just walking away and leaving it and trying again in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, that's hard for anything for any of us to do because we tend to push through it. Um, but, you know, there's, I think there's a lot of lessons in life that we just have to be done and uh, you know even just in life um Cheyenne has roping practices on Wednesday and um we still had probably a good 45 minutes left of practice but she caught one and she looked at me and she's like can I be done and I'm like uh yeah yep you can be done you can be done just end it there you know you just um you have to know and you have to be able to kind of step back and say yeah we paid for an hour but we're gonna do 15 minutes and and you have to be done. So um, it's true that you don't always know when when to do it, um, when to be done. Uh, one I just thought of. So we went hiking yesterday, and we have been so terrible this summer about walking our dogs. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> my big dog, I knew he was going to be exhausted no matter what. We yep. went on a three-mile hike. I knew he was going to be exhausted. I think it's three miles both ways, actually. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but when we got to the lake, he loves to swim. Love, 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 loves to swim. And he was so cute about it. And he was, like, jumping around. He was actually trying to play with other dogs, which is not him. I was (laughs) like, what are you doing? (laughs) This is weird. He was so excited to be there. But I had to make him quit because I knew he was going to be so exhausted by the time we got back that, like, it was going to hurt him in the end. Right, right. Um, So even times like that, it's really hard to know when to end that kind of fun fun play because he was enjoying himself so much. Yeah. Yep. And I think that we forget that ending it on that fun note, too, that's the last thing they remember about it. And so that's what he's going to come back to instead of this activity exhausting him and that he doesn't want to do it anymore, that it's just tiring. So that's good. Melissa, what about what about you this this past week as far as 
knowing when to quit and I think this past week I've been kind of remembering and reminding myself to take the small little victories mm -hmm. in training and if there's something I want Cooper to do and it's a multi-step thing and I get frustrated because she's not getting all of it yeah I kind of have to step back and go okay she has this piece right. let's quit here there's a victory we'll come back to it next time yeah and then she's able to settle I'm able to settle yeah. And that's it's not necessarily quitting, but just kind of taking a step back. Yep. Accepting that little small victory. Yep. And then going at it another day. Yeah. Yeah. It's um I think that there's times I'm working with a French bulldog puppy and um and we kind of got chuckling about Louie because she listens to the podcast as well and and um you know, just how there's a point with a terrier that um it either goes really bad or really good, and, and it's a hard place to find and to be in. Um, Shannon, what are some of the things that you've experienced by pushing Louie farther than what maybe you should have for him? I look at it like a terrier's kind of like a little kid. You know, if, you ha if anybody is with kids at all, like they are having fun and having a good time, and it gets to this point where, like, everything falls apart and everyone's all in tears and, like, you know, and the... And the a uh, Frenchie is like the same way. Yeah. Like you have to know their personality so much to see when they start to caress to where it's going to fall all down in tears. So you just have to work with them a lot and know know what they are. Uh, with Louie, he has he is a very mouthy kind of player, like we talked about before, because people will just put their hand in his mouth and stuff. And for me, I can I notice the pressure of his mouth when it starts to be naughty, I, you know, rude, rude, more rude. <laughs> we talked about spectrum of rudeness because your dog putting their mouth on you is rude no matter what, you know. But I live on a spectrum of rudeness at my house. So I, it, I can tell the pressure of his mouth when it starts to go on the route. We just stop playing, yeah. play a different game, go have a nap, whatever, so... I think that um, I think that all dogs have their thresholds, but I think one thing with the herding dogs is they'll keep giving it to you, but it's not good. And you can kind of tell when that shifts, where it's like, fine, it's going to be my idea because you're not you're not understanding the cues, um, and um, and so I think it's harder, a little bit harder with the herding dogs to see that I see with terriers and Melissa you worked with a little terrier this weekend but um a lot of other breeds will like you just know and then you go okay we're going to do two of these and we're not going to do any more and then we're going to come back in a half hour and do two more but with with the herding breeds they'll just keep on keeping on with you and then you realize after it's too late that you've really failed with them and I think that's I think that's why we struggle so much with the herding dogs and working them because because you can. It's funny. I could tell you a funny story about that. So Murphy, we've been teaching him how to do push-ups with uh -huh. Brandon, with my husband. Um, and we've pushed him to the point that now he thinks he has to bark when he's doing it. <laughs> yeah. And it was. It was just because we kept doing it over and over and over again to the point that he was like, I don't know what you want, but I'm still excited to do this for you, so I'm just going right. to bark. And now we cannot get him to stop barking when he's doing it. And he's not a barker to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really hard. And I'm like, stop doing that. And, but, it, but it's so hard to go back and fix it right. now that it's there. Yep. Um, but on the opposite end, I've got Prudence, who is a sporting breed, more of a sporting type breed, uh -huh. who is willing to do anything for you. And she gets so frustrated if she can't figure it out. Yeah. To the point that she will like do all of her stuff and then shut down and we'll just sit there and shake. And you're like, and it's not that she's, like she's in trouble or you're being mean. She right. just is so frustrated if you yeah. go too far with her. Yeah, yeah, where it's not... It, it, for her, it's just, okay, that's not good enough, so now I don't know what to do. Yeah. So she totally shuts down and shakes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. and that's what Cooper does as well. She gets, we'll be doing something, and she, her intensity increases, mm -hmm. and she becomes more earnest and so concentrated and focused to the point that it's not helpful to her, and it's not yeah. good for her. Yep. To, she needs to cool down. Yep. And that's one thing if there have been runs where, and if I'm running, I don't want to come home until my run's over. Right. But I can tell she's reached that threshold. Yeah. And we have to come back. And that's yeah. a hard thing for me to quit <laughs> right. uh, like yeah. in the morning. But 
she does that this point like the wall that she yeah just gets intense yeah yeah it's um so knowing when to quit what are some of the um suggestions or tips that you would give melissa to people out there just like how do, how do you know when to quit because you don't want to quit on on the bad side um so what are some of the cues that you can give people to say this is when you should quit your training um I would say, as I said before, if the dog increases intensity mm -hmm. and becomes overly excited and starts doing multiple things, offering as just kind of haphazardly offering mm -hmm. behaviors, mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. Yep. Um, and at that point, I wouldn't want to end it on a bad note, but I would take it a step down, maybe a couple sure. of steps down. Let's get a little victory. Yeah. Let's end on a little victory. It might not, not have been the whole thing that you wanted to teach them, mm -hmm. but get that little victory because that's what the dog's going to remember. Great. Great. Michelle, what's your, um, when people say, you know, how often and, and how much should I work my dog in a day? Um, what's, what's your advice there? I mean, I guess it depends on what we're talking about. Cause obviously like a walk is going to be more like a 30 minute walk uh -huh. if we're working on leash training. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's not going to be quite as, I mean, it's mentally stimulating for your dog, but it's not quite as like, oh, I have to figure this small, tiny piece sure. out. Um, so if it's anything that is like, um, more technical like that, mm -hmm. I tell people 10, 15 minutes a day, if that. Yeah. Um, for instance, the the German Shepherd puppy I've been working, I've just been working his heel during mm -hmm. meal time, mm -hmm. and it's maybe five minutes, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, I mean, I get bored with it, too, just sure. as much as he gets bored with it. Yeah. When it's something so little like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, five, ten minutes twice a day, mm -hmm. I think, it, especially if you want to see results quickly. Yeah. I think that's perfect. Yeah. Um, I, I typically, you know, like you said, Michelle, I typically have a general rule that if we're working on large motor skills, you know, a half hour is good. If we're working on small motor skills, yeah, 15 minutes, maybe twice a day. Um, because people have a tendency to overdo that. Um, this little friend, she, she is struggling with health training. Like everything else is going really good, but her health training, that's kind of the last thing I feel like as a terrier in her that she's holding on to. Like, well, watch this. Um, and so we started working just changing the picture where um, she has to ring the bell to get the door open. And she really loves to be outside, but uh, the house training piece of it just is not happening for them. Um, and she really could care less what happens. I mean, she just pees right in front of them and, you know, looks at them like, okay, I'm just, what, what's next, you know? And so um, we started changing the picture a little bit by having her ring the bell and, um, and, you know, they kind of started pushing because she was ringing it really well. And the door was open. She'd go outside. She'd get the treat because we just started it. This door or this bell just opens the door. It has nothing to do with house training. It's just this bell opens the door. And, um, like, she rang it and then looked at him like, okay, is that is that enough? And I'm like, we need to end it there because she's got that look like, you know, this, this is good enough. You know, and so she's like, well, how do, you, how do you know when to quit? And I said, well, you noticed that she was ringing, going outside. Like, there was no, like, looking at you, like, are we done <laughs> kind of look. It was just she was going with it. And um, and then she was, like, ringing it and looking like, okay, are, are we done with this bell thingy? Um, and so helping, I, I ha tend to push the dogs a little bit just so the owners can see that, like, be done point because they will push it because they like seeing that success and then they're like okay what's next what are we going to do you know what if what we're just going to work on this this week and and I'm like well, you were just going to work on this and you're going to do it like five minutes you know so it definitely um, sometimes we as trainers have to push it so the owners can see what that threshold looks like or they've had enough treats that they're in this little food coma that they're like, okay, I just want to sleep. <laughs> and, and I've done that before too with puppies. You're like, oh, that's good and that's great. And then you realize that they're really not mentally done, but they're in a food coma because they've had so many ki pieces of kibble. So Shannon, what's some advice that you would give from um, your standpoint as far as, you know, how, how much, how often, what are my cues? You know, what does that threshold look like? For me, since my dog has uh, behavioral problems, I just want to talk about knowing when you should push through and not stop too soon. Um, for example, if Louie has a tantrum, we have to deal with the tantrum right then and get all the way through back to being calm and normal before we stop. 
Otherwise, then we just have a mountain of tantrums the whole week. You know what I mean? And so you, um, and that could take, if he has a really bad one, which he hasn't for a really long time, but it could be over half an hour, yeah. you know, and it, you just have to keep going. And I've, you know, it could be at three in the morning. You could be late for work. <laughs> You could be late for an appointment, and you have to make that decision if you're late for work. Is it worth it for me to be 10 or 15 minutes late to finish this out, or would I rather have a tantrum every day for the next two weeks that might be 15 minutes to half an hour, you know? So for me, I, um, it's more of an issue, yeah. I guess, yeah. for me to know when to not quit to make it all the way through to the other side to the point where we have release and we're calm and we're not going to have a problem with that again. I, I think that's a really good point because when you're training obedience and tricks and stuff like that, there's a point where you quit. Um, and I think behaviorally, um, you do have to push through to get that one little victory. Um, you know, leash reactivity. We don't just end it because our half hour is up or because the dog seems to escalate. We're going to work through until the dog gives us a little bit of a sign that, okay, the dog, we can have a dog pass us at 25 yards. And if that's the case, we're going to turn around and hurry and get in the car and we're going to end it there. So definitely when you're dealing with behavioral problems, it's more of a push through, get it and be done, not just be done because we feel like the dog is done or that we're done with it. We definitely kind of have to put ourselves in check and say, I need to push you through because I, I, this is what I need um, from you. And that's when you end it for sure. Um, and so I'm sure um, Michelle just being up on the trail this weekend, um, pushing through stuff. And, um, you know, it's just like when Rambo ran back to the car. You guys could have easy, easily said, oh, well, he really isn't in the mood for hiking, so let's end it. But you pushed him. It's like, I, I'm going to keep you safe, so stick with me. I think my husband wanted to end it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But nope, we just kept going. Um, and, and it was such a weird thing for odd behavior for him. It w we didn't even treat it like it was, okay, it was an issue. But we didn't treat it like anything else was wrong. We just right. worked through it and kept walking. Yeah. Like, we didn't put him on a leash because it's never happened before. Like, right. we just were like, that was just a one-off for him. Yep. So we did. We just worked through it and kept pushing through. But if you would have ended it then, what would you have taught Rambo? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, if I leave. I would have taught him that him running back to the car <laughs> was the appropriate thing to do, and it right. wasn't. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. So definitely, you know, even if there's one-off, even if there's weird things, you can't. I mean, sometimes we get feeling guilty, like, oh, well, maybe he was sore and just, we don't know. They don't really know those things that we have to, we have to be the one in charge and say, no, but we're really going to hike today. And I get it that you got startled or scared, but let's keep on keeping on. And so um, when I've had clients where their dogs have raced up to the car, um, that we take the dog and we go back down on the trail and we walk back to the car politely. Like, you don't, you don't just ditch me to get to the car. And, and those things are important. Um, so, yeah, pushing through, it's a good point, Shannon, pushing through um, a fit or a tantrum or a bad behavior to get a calm or a sign of release is really, it's an important thing to, to push through. So knowing when to quit is not always the easiest thing. And behaviorally, if you're struggling, you know, I definitely would say get with a trainer, work with a trainer so that you know what that threshold looks like so that you can be successful. And um, as you're training in day-to-day -day with your dogs, know when enough is enough and that you don't keep pushing them too hard because it, it can backfire on you where they no longer want to do anything for you. So um, know when to quit and don't keep pushing, um, but also push through until you get the calm or the little victory and then be done be done thank you for listening if you want to know more about us and our services please visit our website at www.wsk9co.com and as always we urge you to get out and train